So false flag actually means that you deceive the other one. It has been used in military history a lot. I say in my research um, that World Trade Center 7 was blown up, controlled demolition, because otherwise it doesn't go down. And if, if there is controlled dem demolition with World Trade Center 7, then the whole 9-11 thing is a lie. Because television has been used a lot to lie to people to confuse their minds. Yes. They have no empathy when they kill. And it's, I'm not saying everybody in the United States. I say a small elite which runs the country. This is cruel, but it, that's, that's what I'm talking about, you know? The mix of lies and violence. And people, if they watch too much television, they have the total confusion. Yeah. Tell a lie to your vision, television. I've never heard that. Yes. Welcome to a new episode of Weltschmerz Next. As you can see, we're not in the studio today, but we are in Switzerland with our dear guest, Daniele Ganze. Thank you for hosting us, Daniele. Hello. Daniele is a Swiss author and he is a well-known Swiss historian. He knows a lot about geopolitics and he knows a lot about false flag attacks. Today, we're going to dig deeper into false flag attacks. So, exactly, Daniele, what is a false flag attack? Well, Duncan, thanks a lot for coming to Switzerland, making all the long way uh, from Holland to come here. Uh, yes, a false flag attack. Um, it has this word flag in the word and, and the flags were used on ships, you know, mm -hmm. so one ship would want to attack the other ship and they would just have a different flag uh, showing we're a good guy. And only when they were very close, they would hit the real flag, which is we're pirates and now we're going to kill you. So false flag actually means that you deceive the other one. It has been used in military history a lot. Um, let me give you one example. Let's travel in our head to Cuba. Let's go to the year 1961, so last century. At that time, the United States wanted to overthrow Fidel Castro, who was, who was the president of Cuba at the time. So the CIA, which is the American um, Secret Service, the Central Intelligence Agency, they wanted to overthrow the government in Cuba. Now, that's illegal. You cannot do it. It's, yes. you, you cannot invade another country. It's illegal. So you have to, well, you have to, you can do it in secret. And then the CIA uh, used planes and they painted the, the colors of the Cuban Air Force on these planes. It, it, they, the Fuerzas Armadas Revolucionarias, which is the name of the Cuban Air Force. Mm -hmm. But it was CIA planes. It was not Cuban planes. And then these planes bombed Cuba. And then the Cuban ambassador went to the United uh, Nations and said, we are being bombed. You know, this is illegal. Mm -hmm. And then the American ambassador said, no, no, that's Cuban pilots who bombed their own country because they're so unhappy with their government. And that is a false wow. flag attack. Like you, you it's like if you, if you think about football and um, you, you're, for instance, Ajax Amsterdam and you're yeah. playing Real Madrid and then you just buy a T-shirt from Real Madrid, you put it on and you pretend you're Real Madrid and then the ball comes and you just put it into your own goal and you say, hey, and then, but the other guys would find out that you're not in their team. But you just pretend to be somebody else and you carry out an act of violence yeah. and that really makes the other one look bad. That's that what it means, false flag attack. Wow. And how often does this happen in our world? Um, it happens every now and again. It's very hard for historians to find out because it's a, it's a military technique. Mm -hmm. And usually, you know, um, you have a lot of chaos afterwards. Um, and uh, then the chaos gets bigger, bigger. A lot of people are dead. Sometimes a war starts, like the Viet... Uh, may, can I tell you about the start of the Vietnam War? Sure, yeah. Vietnam in the Cold War was divided into two parts, uh, the North and the South. Yes. And North Vietnam was communist, like today, uh, Korea is divided into North Korea and South Korea. Vietnam is no longer divided, but in the no. Cold War it was. So North Vietnam um, was ruled by communists and South Vietnam, um, uh, the Americans were very strong there. Yes. Before it used to be a French colony, all of it, Andochine. And the French were kicked out and then the Americans came in and tried to take over uh, Vietnam as a colony. And then the Americans um, used small ships to go from the south because Vietnam is at the sea. 
So they gave them little ships to go from the south to the north to cross the barrier between north and south and they made little attacks. Just small attacks blowing up uh, ammunition depots or communication installations of the north. But it was like, you know, small attacks. Blow up, blow up, not killing many people, just a little bit. And then they had an American warship, which is called the USS Maddox. Mm -hmm. And this ship came very close with these small ships. The small ships are speedboats, like little bees. Yeah, yeah. And the big ship is a big, big ship. And it, it came together with them. And that was in August 1964. And then the North Vietnamese thought, oh, these little ships are trying to attack us. And the big ship is giving cover to the small, small ships. So they fired back. And then the American president, Johnson, went on television, because television has been used a lot to lie to people, to confuse their minds. Yes. And so American president Johnson said, we have just been attacked in the Gulf of Tonkin. And therefore, I have told my army to retaliate. And that was in 1964. And then the Vietnam War started and it lasted for 11 years until 1975. And there were... Three million people killed in Vietnam and 58,000 American soldiers died. Unbelievable. So you have a huge chaos afterward. But I, as a historian, I go there and say, okay, was there a, an attack on the USS Maddox? And what happened before? And I see, ah, okay, it was these little ships that, you know, provocated. Yes. And then there was a retaliation and the USS Maddox was never hit. And American president said, yeah, we were, we were hit. We were attacked by, by, um, by North Vietnam, but it was not true. And he even said there were two attacks on the USS Maddox on two, uh, mm -hmm. 2nd of August 1964 and uh, on 4th of August. But on 4th of August, there was nothing. They just invented it. So we have false flag attacks and we have lies and we usually find them just before big wars start, like uh, the Afghanistan war is another one. It started yes. in a very strange way. And the chaos that you describe afterwards, do they use that as a mask to mask up the actual false flag attack? That's it. Because people don't remember, you know, what happened in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Because at one point you have American soldiers in Vietnam, ba -ba 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 -ba, they're killing yes. Vietnamese soldiers. And on the other hand, you have Vietnamese soldiers ba, 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 killing Amer American soldiers. So they're really in the action, okay? Yeah, they and focus they, on the They chaos. focus on the day, right? Yeah. And, and, and then every, every group back home has the television, and the television to every group says, our guys are the good guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. But every group has that. Yeah. And if you switch, you know, if you would switch to television, people would be very confused. Yes, absolutely. No, we are the good guys. So... It really is, once the war has started, it's, it's all crazy. So it's very important, you know, if you, for, for instance, 2003, the Americans and the British attacked Iraq. Yeah. You remember that one? Absolutely. It's not so far away. Almost 20 years ago. Not the yet. Gulf War. Yeah, the Gulf War, 2003 in March. And there, um, US uh, Foreign Minister Colin Powell went to the United Nations Security Council, and he had this little th uh, white thing, he said, Saddam Hussein has anthrax and other weapons of mass destruction. Mm -hmm. And then they broadcasted this in, in, with the television to everybody in the United States and also people in Holland and in Switzerland. And all Western world, actually. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. And people were sitting in front of the television and then they were like hypnotized. You know, they're like, ah, where's that? Iraq, that's a bad country. And then the American president, Bush at the time said, we have to bomb Iraq. Yeah. And now we find out there were no weapons of mass destruction. So what I'm saying as a historian is it's very important to look very, very carefully how we're being lied to. And it's usually coming through television, mm -hmm. also newspapers, but newspapers are not so strong. Television is very strong because people are very emotional in front of the television. Yes. And the president says, let's go to Afghanistan. I mean, the Dutch army went to Afghanistan. Yes, I think basically all NATO armies participated in this war. Yeah. yeah. And that's something we see a lot actually with the false flag attacks also in Afghanistan yep. there's another one yeah can you tell us a little bit more about that well there are different elements first maybe one element how the Afghanistan war started the um, 
The real story there was that the American President George Bush said on September 11, 2001, this is a big terrorist attack. Now, mm -hmm. that's true, okay? Uh, the attacks of 9-11 are, are the biggest terrorist attacks ever. There's yeah. 3,000 people killed. And he said... Osama bin Laden is a bad terrorist and he lives in, in Afghanistan. He's, usually, he's originally from Saudi Arabia, but he's now in, in, in Kabul, in, in Afghanistan. So now we have to attack Afghanistan. And then uh, the Taliban, the government in, uh, in Afghanistan said, you can have uh, bin Laden if you put him on trial and if you can prove that he's guilty for it. Yeah. And then Bush said, no, 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 we don't want to do a trial. Forget Forget the law. We're going to attack. <laughs> Which is bomb your country. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so the strange thing is we then had, as a historian, I said, I want to look at 9-11 because 11 September 2001, everybody was very shocked. That's always the thing. You know, you're, the, you're chaos. Emotion, the chaos, your emotion, tears. You don't understand what's going on. And then on 7 October 2001, so that's not even a month later, yeah. they attacked. And then the Dutch were drawn in, and the Germans were drawn in, and the Italians, French. French. Hey, like everybody who was in NATO had to yeah. go. The Switzerland is not in NATO. So NATO is run by the Americans. Yes. It has now 30 countries in it. So there's Canada, Norway, and Great Britain, and the Dutch, even the Turkey. French, even yeah. Turkey. And if, if, if the US says, <laughs> we're going to Afghanistan, everybody's coming. Yeah. You know, nobody's checking the facts, and nobody's asking why. I mean, that's something we should do as citizens. And then the reason was they said um, Osama bin Laden is responsible for 9-11, but they could never prove it. The second thing that was going on is that I looked at 9-11 and many people have one plane hits a, a tower, a second plane hits a tower, and then so the Twin Towers go down. That's mm -hmm. the World Trade Center in, yes. in, in New York, in Manhattan. And then I saw there's a third tower which is also going down. And that was World Trade Center 7. But, and now Duncan, this is really interesting. The yes. third tower was not hit by a plane. No. So I go like, come on. If, if the planes were the reason why the towers went down, why did the third tower go down? You know, a tower, you can say they were standing together for so long, so he just went down out of sympathy. No, but, the, no. but towers don't do <laughs> don't that. Do right? that. They don't Humans do that. maybe do, yeah, but towers, but towers don't. don't. And then I, I watched how television talked about it. And the BBC, mm -hmm. they said at, in the five o'clock news, they said, well, World Trade Center 7 also collapsed. And, and that was a mistake because it only collapsed at... 5.20, so 20 minutes later. So the BBC talked about the collapse of World Trade Center 7 20 minutes too early. And you know, when I... When I when how I, did they know? How did they know? Yeah. So all these things are very, very complicated. And I say in my research um, that World Trade Center 7 was blown up, controlled demolition, because otherwise it doesn't go down. Now, it just goes down like that. And if, if there is controlled de demolition with World Trade Center 7, then the whole 9-11 thing is a lie. Yes. It's just a lie. Completely made up. And this is, this, is, this is hard for people to understand. And I say, okay, I understand if it's hard for you personally, mm -hmm. um, like uh, if, you, if you're not ready for this. But now that we have a media revolution, like, you know, you are independent, you're young, you come here with your friends, you Absolutely. have a few cameras and you yeah. just put it on. Before, like on, on, on national Swiss television, you know, you could not talk about it. On national Dutch television or on CNN or Fox News. But could, still, it's still not possible. Still not possible. They don't let you in. They censor years everything. 20 years later. Yes. I'm like, can we talk about the explosion of World Trade Center 7? Yes. They say, that's not a good topic. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, okay. Don't I, question the official story. Yeah. Yeah. We, we shouldn't do that. It's always like... Yeah, it's a big war and maybe the war in Afghanistan was wrong. I say that there's 250,000 people killed in Afghanistan. Mm. So why don't we talk about it? This is children, this is women. Can the we whole not country is destroyed. Destroyed. Yes. Can we not? You know, once you've sort of raped a woman and beheaded her father and burnt the house, you can at least say it was wrong. Yeah. That's the least you can do. If you say, I don't want to talk about it. Everything I did was right. They deserved it. They're evil. And I had to burn the house. You know, then you are you're totally blocked.
Yeah. Because when you do... Without empathy, right? You, without empathy. And then, I also come to your book, Die Skrupellose Weltmacht. That's it. And how do you translate that into English? It's my new book. It came out in 2020. And it means that they have no empathy when they kill. And it's, I'm not saying everybody in the United States. I say a small elite which runs the country. And I'm, you know, I'm looking as a historian very closely at what soldiers do. And um, we talked about how the Afga Afghanistan war started. And I'm saying, well, the lie. And now in the war, you have again lies. And then we come back to false flag. Mm -hmm. um, you maybe remember that also Australian soldiers went to Afghanistan. Yeah. Now, if you are in a war and you shoot another soldier, that's allowed. But you're not allowed to, to shoot a civilian. Okay, mm -hmm. you're not allowed to shoot a, a, a child or a woman. You're not allowed to do that. Okay. So there are rules even in war. And so Australian soldiers were in the war fighting. And then one of their friends got killed. And then the whole team gets very angry. But that's always like that. Yeah. You know, you have a team of guys. They go through, through very emotional experiences. A lot of emotions. Yeah, like there's yes. fear, there's hate, there's, there's a lot of emotions. And then one of you, you know, can be your best friend who maybe saved your life on another day in a battle. Now he's dead. And then they want revenge. And then they went into uh, certain places, certain villages. They usually have uh, helicopters in, mm -hmm. in Afghanistan. It's all full of mountains. You cannot go with the bike. No, no, no. <laughs> and you it's a very go rough a, country, right? Yeah, and you cannot yeah. go with a tank. It's very no. difficult. You can, it's one of the most difficult to invade countries in the very world. Very difficult. The Russians lost. Yes, uh, the Russians uh, and now lost. the Americans lost. And, mm -hmm. and the Dutch lost. And the Germans lost. I mean, they all lost. Yes. <laughs> but the thing is, you can fly with your helicopter everywhere. So they have their military camps. The Australians have one and the Germans have one. It's like Asterix. Do you know Asterix? Is that, this is this cartoon with Obelix. Asterix and Obelix. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know, of course. Duncan, you have it also? Yes, course. definitely. Okay. So there's these different the, camps. The gal uh, Galleons. Yeah, the Galleons. Yeah. And the, the Roman Empire is always these camps. Yeah. So, okay, the Australians had their camp there. That was like a, a Roman Empire. And then they fly with their helicopters. And sometimes they shoot soldiers. But sometimes they also shot civilians. Now, to cover up, because that's a crime, mm -hmm. they took um, a, a walkie-talkie. Where are you? Where are we going? Um, and they just took one and put it next to the dead body. Um, and this is a false flag because you put it there. The other one is already dead. He can do nothing. Mm -hmm. And then they said, well, you know, he didn't have a gun. But he had a walkie-talkie. Just like the passports in 9-11. Like the passports. And if you put a walkie-talkie, you're allowed to kill the guy because then he's part of the enemy group because mm. some people have a gun, some wow. people have a walkie-talkie, and together they are an army. That's this is, this is cruel. This is cruel. But it, that's, that's what I'm talking about, you know, the mix of lies and violence. And then the, the highest military commander in Australia, mm -hmm. he went in front of the press and he said, this happened and that's not right. Uh, we have to investigate. So Australia is, is, is moving a bit closer to the truth. Mm -hmm. The Americans are like blocking it off. They blocking it off. Although also in America, there are some people, architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth, who try to talk about you know, the uh, controlled demolition of World Trade Center 7. Okay. So in Australia, you have people who are interested to find out. In America, you have people you're interested to find out. Now you are in Holland. I'm Switzerland. And, you know, in Germany, there's... I, I call these people from the peace movement. They, they want to find out what's going on. Yes, we just want to know. They want to know. And um, so uh, I think now with this information revolution that we have, with the, you know, with the low production costs, uh, we can actually educate ourselves on, on the reality of wars and life. That's great. Yes. And so uh, to go back to Afghanistan, we recently saw in 2021 that the, there was a lot of going on there again. What exactly happened there? And also something I saw is that China is getting involved. You see the USA, we saw that in the last decades, but now China is getting involved. What's happening there? Well, what we know for sure is that the Americans withdrew in 2021, but they only withdrew their ground forces. Mm -hmm. 
they still keep the airspace. Like if you, if you lose a war, you usually withdraw your tanks, you, your soldiers, and you give back the airspace to the other country. Mm -hmm. But the Americans are still in Afghanistan with drones, and the Afghans uh, cannot really control their airspace, which no, is a problem. They don't have the equipment. They don't have the equipment. So it's really difficult um, uh, for them to shoot down the drones because the drones can uh, fire Hellfire missiles on people yes. who are on the ground. And they are being co coordinated by soldiers in America. So they're not in Afghanistan, they're in America. The drone is a robotic uh, vehicle. Yeah, There's nobody through in satellites, it. right? Through yeah. satellites. And it can kill people. So, okay, the Americans have withdrawn, but they're still in the air. So they have not totally withdrawn. That's the first thing. Second thing is um, the Chinese have a common border with Afghanistan. It's only a small one. It's a little stroke yeah, of yeah, land, that's right? It, yeah, I know what it is. Jammu Kashmir. It's, uh, you yeah, know there. it, you know. Of course. That's it. And if you look at the map, you will see that the Chinese have no interest of Americans being there. Because from a Chinese perspective, uh, the Americans have been the empire. And now the Chinese want to become the empire. So they always watch, where is America? And then they look to Japan and they see Japan is full of American military bases. Yes. You know, Japan was bombed by the United States in the Second World War, They're Hiroshima, and Nagasaki. Yeah, and after the war, they put military bases there. Yeah. So the Americans is an empire with many military bases. And the idea is to encircle China. So they already have military bases in Japan. They also have military bases in the south of Korea, mm -hmm. not in the north. The north of no, Korea the is, north, north, is right. communist. They yes, cannot go no, there. No, no. But the south, yes. And they have uh, Taiwan as a very close ally. Yeah. And they give the newest weapons that they have, they give them to Taiwan. And the Chinese say, we want Taiwan back because it belongs to China. So that's one of the big stories in, 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 in the next 10 years. But, you know, we don't have time to go into this. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm, I'm just generally saying uh, China is becoming stronger and the Americans are trying to encircle China, but it's difficult because China is not like Cuba, you know. No, They, it's a very big country. It's very big. And it's gaining influence in Central and Southern Asia. Oh, it's getting a lot of influence. Yes. And, you know, the Americans bombed Cuba in 61. I told you they mm -hmm. painted the... Cuba could do nothing. No. The Americans uh, bombed Serbia in 99. Serbia could do nothing. The Americans bombed Libya in 2011. Yeah. Libya could do nothing. Gaddafi is dead. Yeah. The Americans bombed Syria. Syria couldn't do much. Um, the Americans overthrew the government in, in Turkey in 1980. Yes. They just overthrew it. The Turkish couldn't do much. The Americans overthrew the government in Chile in 1973. The Chilean, we don't know what to do. They've basically bombed the whole world yeah. and threw all the governments away. Not every country, but a lot of countries. There's one that resisted. <laughs> Russia. Yeah, they could never uh, overthrow the government in Russia and they never bombed China. I mean, no. these are, if, you, if you're in Washington and you're looking at world politics, mm -hmm. You see, oh, there's all the small countries like Ukraine or, yes. or, or, or Kosovo or Serbia or Libya and even Iraq, you know, bomb Iraq. But then you see these two big guys. It's like if you were in a class and you, you see two really, really big guys and you're like, if I, if, if I, if I kick them, they're going to kick me bad. Yeah. And Russia is the country which, which is the biggest country of the world, just mm -hmm. from the surface. But there are only 150 million people, so that's not a lot of people. But they have a lot of nuclear warheads. Yeah, they have a lot of nuclear warheads. And the other country is, is China, and there are 1.4 billion. So this yeah. is the country <clears throat> on the whole world with the biggest population. It is crazy how big. The whole European population is just 550. So triple that, and you're, you're in China. And so the Chinese... They, they are now a very proud nation, you know, mm -hmm. because they have nationalistic been... Nationalistic as well. Yeah, nationalistic, because they have been able to lift a lot of people out of poverty into middle class. Yeah. And that's always when a government gets a lot of credit. Yes. So they've lifted people into the middle class. Here in Europe, people are already, are already in the middle class, most. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not, not, not a lot of poverty. There is still poverty, but not much. No. But in China, you really had a huge poverty 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. That's always gone. It's now gone. So they feel like we're a big country. And so this, this conflict between China 
and and the US is really something to maybe we talk about it in three years. <laughs> yes. Right now, you know, this is and and the conflict between Russia and the US is also there, but this is now very specifically in Ukraine. That's Eastern that's, Ukraine. Yeah. 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 What can we see there in Eastern Ukraine? So for uh, I think six or seven years, there's a war going on in yeah. Donbas region yeah. and the uh, Donetsk region. Yeah. region. But recently, it became something bigger again. There was, what's happening there? Right now, you know, we're now February 2022 when we speak. Mm -hmm. And I have to say that it has become more, it has become a country with, which with more tension. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it from a historical perspective, you have to say um, NATO in the Cold War was on the West and on the east, you had the Warsaw Pact, which is yes. which was a, a union led the by the Soviets, and NATO, a union military group led by Washington. So these were the two groups, and then you had the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, and uh, then Germany, which at that time was divided, was reunited in 1990, and then the Americans said, "Well, that part of Germany which was communist, we want to take it into NATO." So the American uh, Secretary of State, which is the Foreign Minister, uh, James Baker, flew to Gorbachev in Moscow. Okay. And he said, can we take this part into NATO of, of Germany? And then Gorbachev said, yeah, yeah, you can take that. And he withdrew all his troops out of Eastern Germany. And then all of Germany was reunited. So it was smaller, then it got bigger. And all of that came into NATO. And then the Americans promised to Gorbachev they would not extend NATO one inch to the east. You know, it would not move further. Yeah, Poland, they got Romania. an agreement, right? Yeah, but it was yeah. not written. It was just oral. Yeah. And that's a problem. And that's a problem. Yeah. Gorbachev had his own oral. We, we have the records. They are in the National Security Archive. Uh, the records are there. Baker said NATO will not move one inch. He said that in 1990. And how bad did they lie? They lied. And they lied a lot when NATO became 50. That was in 99. So NATO was for, founded in 49. Mm -hmm. And when you're 50, 99. Mm -hmm. And then they bombed Serbia. I mean, that is very bad behavior. When it's That's your 50, good, <laughs> it's your birthday celebration. It's huh? their birthday. <laughs> NATO has a birthday. They bomb the country. It's like, okay, who more are we going to kill? No, it's totally illegal. It's totally yeah. illegal. But in, on our, our television, you know, it always says, oh, we have to do this. Yeah, it's uh, good. Yeah, we we're fighting it. for a good war. Yeah, we're fighting the dictatorships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And people, if they watch too much television, they have the total confusion. Yeah. Tell a lie to your vision. Television. I've never heard that. Yes. Tell a lie. Is, is that yours? Your have you heard it somewhere? No, I just heard it somewhere. But tell a vision. Tell a lie. Tell a lie to your vision. Crazy. Yes. But also, so, and, and then they yeah. it, then they um, uh, bombed Serbia in '99, and then they enlarged NATO. You know, they made it bigger and bigger. So, from yes. a Russian perspective, that they, they are literally on the borders with Russia now. They came closer. The they, they took States. Poland, Estland, Lettland, Lithuania. Romania, Bulgaria, so just NATO came closer mm -hmm. and they have one piece missing, that's Ukraine. And Belarus. And Belarus, that's it. So they try to drag Ukraine into NATO and therefore the United States uh, tried to overthrow the government in Kiev, yeah. which is the capital of Ukraine, in 2014. The Maidan the, revolution. The Maidan, yes. And people know that the government was overthrown, that's, you know, that's undisputed yes. but people don't understand that it was actually Barack Obama the US president who was behind it and Joe Biden who is now president he's the vice president they pushed it but people don't talk about it and the son Hunter Biden yeah he bought a lot of uh, uh, yeah, uh, he, a little bit of an investment a there. little bit of an investment <laughs> right yes it's totally Eastern corrupt Ukraine. it's totally yeah. corrupt yeah. and now the Russians say okay you overthrew you overthrew the government there. Victoria Newland was very uh, was a leading person who, who was in this overthrow, yeah. and uh, she would she would call in to, to Jeffrey Pyatt. He's the American ambassador in Kiev, and they would you know they would talk about who they want to have in the new government, and they go like Klitschko. Do you know Klitschko, the boxer? Yeah. No, Klitschko will not be the president. He can be he can be. Um, he can be the mayor of Kiev. Yeah. He, he shouldn't be the, uh, the prime minister. We could, should have Yatsenyuk, Yatsenyuk as prime minister. And then this telephone call was intercepted 
and made public. So I think it was the Russian military secret service who intercepted yes. it, made it public, just as proof. And then Victoria Newland um, is very funny. She talks with the ambassador and she, uh, she says, and you know, they're, they're thinking, should we bring the European Union in? And then she says, oh no, fuck, fuck the EU. Fuck the EU. I know said. that fragment, yes. <laughs> fuck the EU. Fuck you. Yeah. So Germany was very angry. Angela Merkel was like, oh, you can't say that. Yeah. And so it's, it's, you know, it's undisputed that the US tried to overthrow the government. In, in Ukraine. So I look at it and they overthrow the government. And I go, okay, then it's a US coup d'etat. But in the Western media, in Switzerland, nobody talks about Nothing. it. And in, in, in Holland, no, if, you, if you like that, US overthrow of government in Ukraine, nothing. Yeah. It just didn't happen. There's one guy, uh, he worked for the Spiegel in Germany and he is now dead, but he um, actually was a whistleblower for these things. Udo, um, What's his name again? Ulfkotte. Udo Ulfkotte. Udo Ulfkotte, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And I think that perfectly shows that when a guy speaks out uh, uh, and has a very reliable background, that it's dangerous for them. It's, it's dangerous, dangerous for the expi- establishment. It. Yeah, because people don't want independent journalists, you know, no. like, like people like you who, who, I mean, we have nobody here who tells us what we cannot say. We're just free. And... People who watch television have to understand that what they see is not free. No. Okay. There's a lot of pressure on everything, every word that is There's being a big said. Big agenda there. behind it. Yes, and it's very simple for people to understand that. That when I explain it, we have now what we call a media revolution. In mm-hmm. 2005, YouTube first went online. 2005. Yes. So it's not 20 years ago, but almost 20 years ago. And then, I have, Duncan, I have to tell you, I had no idea how big a change this is. I first thought, well, YouTube is just a stupid little thing where people <laughs> can show how a cat falls into a swimming pool. I really thought that. I thought, this is, this is YouTube. Who needs that shit? And then, uh, and in 2005, I put nothing on YouTube. In 2006, nothing. I still went to national television, like Swiss national television. Mm-hmm. They invited me. I went there. So I thought, this is where you have to talk as a historian. Yes. And then suddenly, you know, Swiss national television attacked me and said, oh, you question 9-11. This is a conspiracy theory. Yes. And the then I, the then easy I, blame. Huh? Yeah. Then I see the censorship on the national television. And then I see on YouTube, suddenly my interviews get more and more interest. And then I understand, ah, oh, okay, it's a media revolution. So now we have 17 years of YouTube. And we see a lot of censorship. Definitely. You know that. So a lot of channels get wiped out on YouTube. But, and this is very important, historically, we now know that video communication is possible. Even if YouTube is using uh, censorship, people who are young like you, I don't know how young you are. 23. 23. Okay. I'm 49. So this is one generation. (laughs) A gap. (laughs) Yeah, it's a gap. But your generation, you know, will never go back and just sit in front of television and wait for the government. Basically, doesn't. none of us is actually watching television anymore. Yeah, it's over. Yeah. It's for just for over. five, six years, we don't watch it. It's over. Yeah. And my generation, I have to say, very, very sorry to say that, <laughs> we sat in front of television and then... Half of your lives. <laughs> yeah. But part of it, we watched Champions League, which was great fun. But mm. when, they, when they tell you on television to bomb another country, I think it's just so sad. Yes. But they did this again and again and again. So I always say, take your television and put it into... In the garbage bin. If you can. I mean, yeah. I, I still have my own television because I watch sports. I do. Mm. I, I just like sports. Yes. But for political information, I would never trust television. No. So then you go to YouTube. And there you have to find out who is a good and reliable YouTube channel. And then when this channel is being shut down, you have to follow him wherever he goes. Yes, because then you know he's speaking the truth. Yes, because also uh, on YouTube we will see in the next year a lot of um, censorship. But it will not be possible to stop video communication. What we will see is basically a shift from Mm -hmm. YouTube to other channels, and I don't know which channels yet. You know, there's Odyssey, Rumble, there's Bitchute. Bitchute, there's many different yeah. channels, and uh, they all, all, this very small still. I mean, YouTube is big and everything else is small. Yes, but I think it's also because uh, 
a lot of big alternative media platforms are still on YouTube. Yeah. The moment they get censored and kicked out, yeah. a lot of people will go along with them yeah. next to uh, BitChute. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's in the next 10 years we will see this, uh, or maybe next five years, I don't even know. But uh, I, I think, think it was pretty soon already. Pretty soon. But yeah. I thought it was very, very interesting to talk to you. And I, I just also want to take the opportunity to thank you for your work. Uh, yes, well. You're a young man and you're here with your, your team and they're all, you know, young, courageous people. And I, I can only say it's important. It's, the truth is, is, is important. It's not that we can say, oh, we don't care what happened on 9-11. No, we don't care what, what there are lies in television. No, it's important. And uh, I, I, I think so. That is the hope for the future. Thank you. Thank you so much for hosting us. I want to show people your book. This is your first book. Yeah. NATO secret armies. This one is from 2005. Yep. So if people are interested in everything that we talked about today, they can check out your books. So that's great. Thank you for watching this video of Weltsmets Next. If you like this video, you can subscribe on our channel and you can leave a donation via the link in the subscription. Thank you. Until next time.